let's take a look at projectile motion. And actually, before we even get to projectile motion, let's talk about something called free fall. Free fall is defined as motion where the only force acting on the object is the gravitational force. So free fall is a situation where the only force acting on the object is gravitational force. So, for example, if you were to drop an object, and let's ignore air resistance for the moment, but if you were to drop an object after it leaves your hand and before it hits the floor or the ground, the only force that's acting on that object is the gravitational force. There's no normal force, there's no friction force, uh, there's no tension force, none of that. There's only a gravitational force. So that object is in free fall. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's say you throw an object upward. So it starts out, it's in your hand, and you throw it upward. After it leaves your hand, the only force acting on it is the gravitational force. After it leaves your hand, there's no normal force from your hand, and there's no tension force because there's no string, and there's no friction force because it's not touching anything. So the only force acting on it is the gravitational force, and it's in free fall. That seems a little odd because it's velocity is upward. It's moving upward after you throw it upward, uh, at least for a while. But it's still considered free fall because the only force acting on the object is the gravitational force. That's the definition of free fall. So this is free fall. Okay, let's look at a third example. Now let's say that you throw an object at an angle. So it starts out and you throw it at some angle above the horizontal, like you're throwing a baseball from your hand to somewhere else. Well, go like this, and if we draw the picture, we can see that after it leaves your hand and before it hits anything, when it's in the air, as long as we ignore air resistance, nothing acts on the ball except gravitational force. There's no normal force, there's no tension force, there's no friction force, none of that. There's only gravitational force, and therefore, this is also in free fall. All right. So, in free fall, the only force acting is the gravitational force. So, let's think about that a little more deeply. Let's think about the net force. If the only force acting is the gravitational force, then the net force, well, that's the sum of all the forces acting. So, in free fall, the net force equals the gravitational force. Because if we add up all of the forces, well, there's only gravitational force, so net force equals gravitational force. Okay, well, let's do a little bit of algebra here. The net force is equal to ma. That's Newton's second law. Okay, and fg, the gravitational force, fg equals mg. Okay, so we can use that. So that means that ma equals mg in free fall. And we can cancel out the masses then. So in free fall, the acceleration of the object is equal to g. And remember, g, when we're on the Earth, is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. That g is referred to as the acceleration due to gravity. So on Earth, an object in free fall will accelerate downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. That's why g is called acceleration due to gravity. If gravity, gravitational force, is the only force acting, then the object will accelerate at g, at 9.8 meters per second squared downward on the Earth. Now, g has different values if you're somewhere else. Um, if you're on the moon, g is equal to 1.6 meters per second squared downward. If you're on the sun, it's something different. If you're in Earth orbit, way far away from the surface, then g has a different value. But as long as you're on the surface of the Earth, or near the surface of the Earth, g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. So now let's take a look at projectile motion. Projectile motion is two-dimensional motion where the only force acting on the object is gravitational force. So it's free fall, but two-dimensional. So it's free fall, but the motion is both up and down vertically and side to side, left and right, or horizontally. So I'll try to draw a diagram of a classic projectile motion example. Uh, it turns out, we'll see this a little bit later, but in projectile motion, uh, 
the path of the object is a parabola. So I'll try and draw the object in a couple of places along its path as it moves. Um, and yeah, it kind of does this kind of thing. Um, and I'll draw the velocity in there. And in every point of projectile motion, the only force acting is gravitational force. Because remember, it's free fall. The only force acting is gravitational force. And also, at every moment, as long as we're near the surface of the Earth, the acceleration of the object is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. The acceleration is equal to g. Now, when we analyze projectile motion, the key in almost every case is to break it down into horizontal and vertical parts and then look at the horizontal parts individually and look at the vertical parts individually. And I'll show you what I mean. So if we think about this situation, this projectile motion situation that I've drawn, let's think about what we know is going on horizontally and then let's think about what we know is going on vertically. Well, horizontally, let's see, the force. There's no horizontal force at all, right? The only force acting is gravitational force, and it's downward. So there's no horizontal force going here. Now, vertically, if we go over there to vertically, well, the force that's acting vertically is the gravitational force, and it's downward. So there's a downward gravitational force at every point in the motion. Let's think about the acceleration horizontally. Well, there's no force horizontally, so there's no acceleration horizontally. The horizontal component of the acceleration is zero. Now in the vertical, the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward, right? Because the only force acting is the gravitational force and like we saw before in free fall, if the only force acting is gravitational force, then the acceleration equals g. So in projectile motion, the vertical acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Now let's think about what we can say about the velocity. Well, horizontally, there's no horizontal acceleration. So horizontally, the velocity is constant. The horizontal velocity is constant in projectile motion. And we can say that as Vx is constant. Now vertically, let's think about the velocity. The vertical velocity has to be changing because vertically there is acceleration. The acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward. So vertically, the velocity is always changing. And because the acceleration is downward vertically, the velocity is always becoming either less upward or more downward. It's always accelerating downward, so the velocity is always becoming less upward or more downward. So those are kind of the basics of how we're going to deal with projectile motion. We split it up into horizontal and vertical, and now we have this information about the horizontal motion and this information about the vertical motion. Now I'm going to add two other little facts in there, um, and we're not going to or I'm not going to uh, prove them right now, but the trajectory of the projectile refers to the path that the projectile takes. So the path that it takes in space. So if you were to trace its motion, that's the trajectory. And it turns out that for projectile motion, if we ignore air resistance, the trajectory of the projectile is a parabola. Also, at any point in its trajectory, the velocity is always tangent to the path. And when I say tangent here, what I mean is it's not related to like sine, cosine, tangent. What I mean by tangent is that it's parallel to the curve at that point, or it has the same slope as the curve does at that point. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw the velocities in. If you look, the velocities in the projectile motion situation that I've drawn, they always have the same slope as the point that they're coming from. They always are tangent to the path. 